Hey, what's up guys? So I've got a big project coming up where pretty much all of the I.O. is used up on my microcontroller and I still need to read in like 10 switches. So I need 10 more digital inputs. To solve this, I'm going to use the 74HC165, which is an 8-bit parallel in serial out shift register. So it's a close relative to the 74HC595, which you might remember from my LED cube videos, which is an 8-bit serial in parallel out. So this is kind of the same part, but backwards, it's in reverse. So with just two pins off your microcontroller, you can read in all eight inputs from the shift register. Uh, and just like the 595, you can daisy chain these together. And with those same two pins off your microcontroller, you can read in, you know, thousands of inputs. Uh, there's limitations to that, of course, which we'll get into. But in this video, I'll just show you the basics on how to work with this part. And we're actually going to control it with push buttons, just like I did with the 595 a while back. So let's first go to the whiteboard and see how everything's hooked up here. All right, so here's how to hook everything up. Um, you've got VCC connected to five volts, your ground to ground. Uh, your control pins are your parallel load pin, which is active low. So I have it actually pulled up with a 1K ohm resistor to five volts. And then with a push button from the pin to ground, I can push the push button in and that will actually load the status of the digital inputs to the internal registers. We have the clock pin, which is pulled low with a strong pull down resistor. I'm using 100 ohms for that. And then from the pin to five volts with a push button. So I get that rising edge of the clock pin when I push that in. Uh, we have the clock enable pin, which I'm just pulling low for now and you can leave that pin low. Um, your DS here is your serial input to the part, uh, which, which well, I'll talk about later when, uh, when I daisy chain two of these together. Um, and then you have your D0 through D7, and these are your actual digital inputs, okay, connected to the outside world. And on the bench, I just have each one of these tied to either plus five volts or to ground. But if you were to use this in a, on a real project, you'd want a pull down resistor on each of the pins and then your push button connected to plus five volts. So when you push that in, the pin goes high. Okay, so, and then you have Q7, which is your serial out, which is actually the internal register to D7. So when you pull your parallel load flash, your parallel load pin low, it'll actually move the status of all of these pins to the internal registers. And if your digital pin seven was high, it would make Q7 go high. And then on each rising edge of the clock pin, it'll actually shift out. So it'd be Q7, Q6, Q5, Q4, Q3, 2, 1, 0, and then whatever was on DS here, okay? So that's how the serial in works, um, which we'll talk about more when I uh, demo the, uh, the daisy chain configuration. So that's pretty much it. Uh, they also give you uh, the inverted of Q7, which I don't know what you would do with that but I'm just leaving it disconnected so now let's uh, let's go back and do a quick demo of this all right so we're gonna start off by controlling just one of these shift registers and I've got digital pins 1 3 and 7 tied high so those pins are connected directly to 5 volts all the other digital pins are tied to ground uh, Q7 or the serial out pin is connected to an LED so as we're clocking the part we should see that LED turn on and off uh, the parallel load, the clock, and the clock enable pin are all connected to push buttons here. So we should be able to control the part directly with these push buttons. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we start clocking the part. So first we'll pull the parallel load pin low, which basically takes a snapshot of the status of all of the digital pins and loads that into the internal registers. So as soon as we pulled that low, Q7 went high, and that's because digital pin 7 is tied to 5 volts. So now if we pull the clock enable pin low and pull the clock pin high, this is the status of digital pin 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Okay, so you can see that we're basically loading we're, we're shifting the internal status, the internal registers over every time we uh, 
we pull the clock pin high. So it goes seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay, so now let's test this out with a second shift register. All right, so now we have the second shift register installed with its DS pin now connected to Q7 of that first shift register and its Q7 pin connected to the LED. The only digital pin I'm connecting high on that second shift register is digital pin seven. Uh, you may notice that I did get rid of the clock enable push button, so that pin is just connected low on both shift registers. And by the way, all of the, uh, the pins are connected in parallel. So the parallel load pin is connected to, to the same pin on both shift registers and the same thing with the, uh, the clock pin. So now if we pull the parallel load pin low, the LED turns on because digital pin 7 of that second shift register is pulled high to 5 volts. So now if we go through six, five, four, three, two, one, zero, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero, you can see how it shifts out. So I actually shifted out the eight bits from the second shift register, then eight bits from the first shift register, and that's how the whole thing works. So now let's try uh, a little bit of Arduino code here to control this same exact setup here, and hopefully we get the same results. Okay, so here's some really simple Arduino code to uh, control these shift registers and read out the digital inputs. Uh, we're going to use the SPY library for this, so that means we need to use MISO and CLOCK, so serial CLOCK there. Uh, you can't use MOSI for anything else, and uh, you're going to connect MISO here, pin 12 on the Arduino, to Q7 of your last shift register, so that's where that LED was connected and uh, digital pin 13 from the Arduino to the clock pin of the shift registers. Um, for the parallel load pin, I'm gonna use digital pin two, but you could use anything you want. Uh, we're gonna have two bytes here for the two shift registers. And if we go into setup here, we're gonna use the serial port just for uh, debugging. And we're gonna run the uh, spy port at its slowest speed, that's 125 kilohertz. SPY mode is uh, zero, most significant bit first, and then we'll kick things off. So PID mode two, which is our PL pin, is an output, and we're gonna go ahead and write that high because when we write it low, we're actually going to load the, the uh, digital inputs to the internal registers. Okay, and jumping right into the loop here, we pull that pin low, the PL pin low for just a millisecond, and then write it back high. So we're just taking that quick snapshot there, and then we're going to do two, a two-byte transfer here to read out that the, the, uh, the data out of the, uh, the shift register. So obviously the first one comes out first, or I mean the last one comes out first. And we load it into shift two here and then shift one. And we're just sending garbage data. Nothing is connected to the mossy pins, so, so that's why we just send zeros out. And then we just go ahead and print out what we just read out of the shift register. So register one is the shift one, and we're gonna print it out in a binary format so we can actually see the ones and zeros. And then wait a second and repeat. So it's just some simple demo code to test everything out. And here is what we're getting. So just like I just showed you there in the demo with the push buttons, let me pause this for a second here. So register one is zero one is high, three is high, and seven is high, and then on shift register two, just seven is high. Okay, and that's pretty much it. So I'll make this code available uh, in the uh, description below, and uh, that's how to work with the 74HC165. Um, oh, one last thing. The only problem with this code, or with working with this shift register, is that you only get, you have to pull it. So what happens if you have a fast moving input, like something that just pulses really quickly? Well, you're gonna miss it if you don't take this snapshot. So in a future video, I'm gonna show you how to work with latches. And we're gonna combine a latch with the 74HC165 so that you don't miss those fast moving inputs. So anyway, that's in a future video. Uh, thanks for watching.